Hi, welcome to another Power Blast podcast. We all know that vegetables are good for us, right? But what do you do when you just don't want to eat them? Do you gag them down? Do you uh, just sit at the table and just keep going until the veggies are all gone in your plate? (laughs) Well, let's talk about how to eat vegetables when you absolutely hate them. Stay tuned. Hey, my friend, Perry Tinsley here, creator of the Power Blast podcast, The Power of Possibility, Passion, and Purpose. And I want to thank you for tuning in, whether it's your first time or you're a regular listener. Uh, If you're listening on your podcast app, please do me a favor, get over there, drop in, leave an honest rating and review. That will help other people discover this show. And if you're over on YouTube, catching the video version, please be awesome. Smash the subscribe button and hit that notification bell so you don't miss a show. And it would also be crazy awesome if you just dropped in a thumbs up and dropped in a comment to help us with the YouTube algorithm. You absolutely rock, my friend. Veggie haters, unite, right? (laughs) In the past, I used to hear, I used to hear these things. The best thing about veggies is that we're supposed to eat more of them. And I'd think, I don't care. I'm just going to gag on them and spit them out. Then I'd hear something like, Veggies, they're, they're so good for you. They're, they're high in vitamins and minerals and fiber, and they, they play a really major, a big major role in keeping us healthy. And I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to gag them and spit them out. And then I'd hear they're so low in calories that you can eat them until you're really, really full. And I'm like, I don't care because I'm just going to gag on them and spit them out. Choking down vegetables. That was that was me. I don't know if it's you. You might be a veggie lover. That's that's okay. But choking down vegetables uh, that you absolutely hate just because they're healthy. That's not fun at all. And so um, I am going to tell you that it's never too late to develop a taste for them. Uh, if you don't believe me, uh, hello, my name is Perry, and I'm a certified veggie hater. Well, I used to be. Um, Here are the ways. I'm going to share some ways with you that I became a veggie lover without being officially tortured or brainwashed. (laughs) Now, one of the things I did, uh, as a matter of fact, I was talking with uh, a fitness trainer. And I was trying to get myself out of eating vegetables, eating uh, eating vegetables at all. It was part of this eating plan, this nutritionist plan. And um, I, I was battling with a digestive issue where my doctor told me not to eat raw vegetables because it would aggravate it. But in my mind, I didn't hear the word raw. I heard, do not eat vegetables. And that was okay with me. <laughs> so I'm telling this trainer, you know, the doctor said not, not to eat raw vegetables. And this trainer goes, well, that's okay. You can eat uh, them sautéed. You can eat them cooked. You can eat them grilled. You can and, and went down the line. And I'm like, all right. So I went on a hunt to try and make nutritious. You know, the, make the vegetables delicious. Now, for somebody that was gagging them down. Um, that's just that that just didn't seem the case. I know. I, I don't know if this is you or not, but if. You're like me when I grew up. Uh, vegetables just tasted gross, and they they were prepared in a gross way or maybe unappetizing way. I gagged at the smell, uh, and then you add in the fact of being forced to eat them, and then gagging them down with water. Sometimes throwing it back up. Sorry for the visual. Um, it was a very traumatic time, and you carry that into your adulthood where. Now you've got more things under your own control, and it's like, now nah, I don't have to eat them because I'm an adult now, right? Um, and I'm thinking like the notoriously hated ones, uh, the, the broccoli, the cauliflower, the asparagus, lima beans, uh, Brussels sprouts, ugh, you know? So when I decided to get serious with my health, and I, and I, I started to take a look at getting creative to mask the taste that I had grown to hate. Um, and so I started simple here. I went into my freezer and I saw a Mexican stir fry. Perhaps it was like a fajita mix. I think it was a fajita mix or something, some sort of thing. And, and the veggies that were in there, um, I just picked out the broccoli bits. I'm like, well, I can tolerate these other ones. You know, I was at a toleration of some of the vegetables, but loathed some of the others. So I picked out the broccoli. And then I'm like, well, what can I do to make this even better? And, and I, I love salsa. 
So I used different types of salsa to coat and pour on my vegetables. And I would eat it that way. And, and I, I started kind of getting into it. I'm like, well, that's not bad. You know, and then eventually I, I, I branched out into um, other things to put on it, like a, low, a lower sodium soy sauce. And I'm like, well, I need a little more variety than this salsa stuff. Um, and over time, I find myself I got lazy. And I didn't pick out the broccoli before I made it. You know, the broccoli stayed in. And I thought I would just kind of pick around them when I was eating them. But I ended up eating a few. And I'm like, whoa, wait, those are even tolerable. How did that happen? (laughs) Uh, So a few pieces of broccoli graced my plate on a daily basis. And here's the thing I noticed. And this was kind of the thing that kicked in for me that I wouldn't have expected. I noticed my body really responding well to veggies. Um, I felt a bit more pep. I dropped like five pounds in the first week, which I was, you know, I, I told myself I was just going to commit to it for about 30 days and then pr- that I'm proving to myself that that's one thing that won't work for me and that I actually do hate vegetables. But when that five pounds came off and I'm still tolerating these, I'm not gagging on them. I'm like, and I'm feeling fuller at dinner. Well, I started adding in some other veggie options at lunchtime. So that was mainly dinner. I was throwing in veggies. Now no, no, it's happening at lunch. And after about 30 days, I started feeling really amazing. And so I got daring. I started to try other cooking methods for, for, um, for vegetables. I started trying roasting vegetables or, or baking and sauteing and really dialing into the things that, I guess avoiding the things that I could not stand as a kid, Uh, even grilling. I I did grilling uh, to do that. And then I started adding in herbs, you know, like cilantro or basil or parsley, um, some spices, lemon, lime juice, stuff like that, and uh, even balsamic vinegars. And I started eating salads uh, with raw spinach. Are you kidding me? (laughs) So I was really careful. And you, you veggie lovers out there are probably just laughing at this stuff, but I, I I was careful to select, uh, you know, when I was doing salads, I was careful to select dressing, uh, that was on the, on on the healthy side. And I, I made sure I measured out stuff. I didn't just kind of like dump it on and pour it up uh, on there. Uh, like a lot of people do. But I, I toss it and make sure the flavor's full, full, you know, all throughout. But now I, just, I was just all about eating vegetables. And I love this stuff. And over the years, you know, it, it, you know I'll give you some tips on, on some other things that you can try. But it, when, I, when I, my parents found out that I was eating vegetables, their jaws hit the floor. They're like, what? <laughs> so um, here's a few other tips. If you are like me and you struggle to eat vegetables or you absolutely hate them, but you know that you need to get them into your, your eating, and tip number one is just to branch out gradually, just like I did. You know, use a few vegetables as a starting point and gradually expand the taste and preference as time goes on. You know, once you're getting in some of the vegetables and you're tolerating them, maybe you could tolerate another one or just a, a few of it. You know, it's like, okay, I can't stand broccoli, but I'll, I'll put in a couple little bites worth in there. You know, another way to switch things up is to switch up the way you cook them, you know, uh, for your for your favorites. Um, example, you know, try this one. Uh, for fries, get your hot air fryer and you and slice do slices of turnips in there. Those are absolutely amazing. Or or grill Brussels sprouts. That's what actually got me hooked on those because when my wife went to make those, I was like, nope, I hate them, I hate them, I hate them. And so, but I never had them that way. So when she made them and I'm like all right I'll try one I tried one I was like blown away at the flavor and then I and then I finished the batch it was just like that was the big game changer or roasting vegetables like carrots beets parsnips uh onion and and sweet potatoes uh you roast those that will blow your mind at how amazing those are another tip here is to change your vegetable story sometimes the memories and the feelings from childhood, those get in the way of accepting new foods as an adult. And we, we put up these roadblocks, resistance right away. Maybe it's re- revising your story to tell yourself that you're telling yourself about uh, what you're eating uh, for the vegetables. For example, let's say um, in your home as a child, you only had canned veggies and they were drowned in butter. 
then flip the script and say, you know what? I have so much gratitude for my parents. They're at least trying to make me healthy and not, they weren't trying to torture, torture me as a kid. They're, they're trying to have me, you know, fig, they were figuring out some creative ways, the best ways to have me get nutrients in my body, you know? And so you could tell yourself, you know, that's so awesome that they did that for me. You know, I should try those again sometime. Maybe, maybe not, maybe on my own terms, maybe not in cans or something, but, and maybe not drawn in butter, but, but I enhanced them with salsa. So you're kind of changing that story and changing that script in your, in your head and really challenging those resistant stories, those knee jerk reactions that you're having when somebody brings up and it's like, oh, there's cauliflower on the menu. And you're like, oh, I hate that, you know, and immediately I don't want that, but you're just kind of because it's been something, you know, it got slathered in some really ugly melted cheeses or something that was that was horrible uh, when you were a kid, whatever. Uh, another tip here is to blend them into recipes. Uh, it's kind of like sneaking them in, you know, maybe like a, like a parent might do for for a kid. But here's a few of my favorites. Um, one is my our cauliflower pizza crust. <laughs> That's how we get cauliflower in, in our in our eating. I'll drop the recipe to that in the show notes. It's just awesome. Uh, another one is a health smoothie. Um, you know. A lot of times you can sneak in spinach and kale and stuff, and you don't really even taste it in a smoothie. Uh, it makes it green, of course, but you just don't taste it. Um, I'll I'll um, I'll throw in my favorite um, my favorite smoothie uh, that in the uh, show notes here. It's it's when when I when I have mine, I, it's like I'm taking myself five times through the salad bar because <laughs> it's just so packed with nutrients. So I'll drop a link in the show notes for you there. Um, you can also blend the you know blend veggies and sneak them into things like burgers, sauces, casseroles, uh, uh, ingredients uh, like chicken and things like that. Um, so many different things. So when when you start thinking uh, veggies most, and how can I get more of these into my body and into my meals more easy? Um, these tips are winners. So. Helping our bodies get the essential vitamins and minerals. I mean, it's good for good health. And I know you're probably saying, doesn't matter if I'm going to gag them down. But hopefully those tips will help you. And not only will vegetables help you maintain a healthy weight, but it can also help you reduce risks of other chronic illnesses. And we all, we all want that, right? Um, so don't expect to totally transform yourself as a veggie lover overnight, uh, it's going to be a slow and steady process. It took me years. But over time, your body begins to crave, especially when you start to respond, positively respond that you didn't expect. So get ready to feel younger, my friend. Uh, and if you'd like some more tips plus 52 weeks of free coaching, join my Upside Down Fit community. This is where we have a fun group striving to make healthier habits in this awesome chapter of life. I promise you'll absolutely love it. Head over to UpsideDownFit.com. That's all I have for this week. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you so much. Please share, subscribe, leave an honest rating and review in your podcast app to help others discover this show. And for those of you over on YouTube catching the video version, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications button so you can get an alert each time a new show drops. You absolutely rock, my friend. That's all I have for this week. And as always, remember, it's never too late. We'll see you next week.